Imagine managing your SharePoint lists effortlessly with every update happening automatically behind the scenes. No more tedious manual entries, no more worrying about outdated information, just seamless, reliable data management that keeps your team synchronized and productive. But how do you achieve this level of automation without getting lost in complex setups? Well, enter Power Automate, the tool that can transform the way that you handle your SharePoint lists. In this video, we'll uncover the step-by-step -step process to update your SharePoint lists using Power Automate, streamlining your workflows and eliminating those repetitive tasks all at once. Okay, so let's jump right into the tutorial. Here I have a Microsoft Teams list. This is a content plan, essentially. It's completely blank, but don't worry if you are using SharePoint and not Microsoft Teams because the two things are actually intrinsically linked together. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll jump on over into our SharePoint site. Okay, over here, we can go down to site contents. Down here, it will load up with all of your site contents. And in here is the content plan, the actual SharePoint list. Like I said, I set this up in Microsoft Teams and it creates a SharePoint list. You can also just create SharePoint lists. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter which way you go, you will end up with a list that you can modify using Power Automate. Okay, so here you can see we've got title, description, uh, content medium, the publish date, the approval, etc. Okay, it's completely blank at the moment. Now, here I have a very straightforward Power Automate flow to update the list. It's actually only really broken down into three components. The when an item is created, I want to do an approval for that item. And then I want to basically update the list with pieces of information once I have an approval. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start completely from fresh. Okay, so we're going to come and create and we're going to create a automated cloud flow. Okay, this is going to be update list, um, update list and we are going to use this as when an item is created in SharePoint. It's this one right here. Now this doesn't matter uh, whether it is a Microsoft Teams list or whether it is a SharePoint list that you're using. They are both the same. So you'll go ahead and you'll click this one right here and click create. This is going to create a blank kind of canvas for us right here. Now you will note that this is a kind of new designer uh, where you can kind of drag things around and do whatever you want with it. I really don't like this. I think this is nice and modern to look at, but ultimately I think it just lacks some of the functionality that you can normally quite easily and intuitively get to with the old designer. So over on the far right hand side, we have the new designer toggle button. I'm going to go ahead and switch this. Um, I'll go ahead and switch without saving. It's probably going to knock me out. We'll see. Uh, there we go. Okay. So we end up with a whole new kind of look and feel, right? This is basically what it used to look like years ago. And well, to be honest with you, this just looks so much better and it's easier to use. It's more intuitive in my humble opinion. Of course, if you're used to using the pre, uh, the new version, then feel free to do that. I like to toggle it this way. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our trigger point. Okay. Our trigger point is going to be looking at our uh, SharePoint site. Okay. So I'm going to use the company site and then I'm going to go ahead and use the content plan list. I only have one list. If you've got multiple lists, you'll just find the right list for yourself and give it a click. So that's the first step, right? Our trigger has been set up. So so every time a new item is created within our content plan list, it is going to basically trigger this flow. Okay, so the next step is to basically come in here and we're going to do an approval flow so that I can control some of the data flowing into the SharePoint list. Okay, so for that, we can type in approval. Um, and you can see here, there's a few different options, create an approval, start and wait for an approval, start and wait for an approval of text uh, or wait for an approval. What you want to do here is start and wait for an approval. Okay. So basically as this creates a new item, it wants to start it. And then you're going to wait for someone to basically approve the content. So if we come into here, we can see that we want to load the approval type. Now for the most part, depending on your organization, this can be really simple or rather complex. You can see you've got a list of different options okay everyone must approve so if you've got like a board of directors that maybe create a proposal for them and you want unanimous decision on that well in which case you're going to use an everyone must approve function alternatively if there's kind of like any really one boss or maybe you have a, a supervisor or a manager and you need one of those two to kind of approve something well it'll be the first one to approve you don't need both of them so i usually use the first to respond i find this pretty easy to kind of do this will then expand us into more options first of all we get a title we can call this um whatever we want 
And uh, of course, you know, we can take the title from uh, the trigger point if we want to, but actually we might actually find it better to type something in here uh, rather than using dynamic content. At least in my example here, it would be the right thing to do. However, you could of course use pieces of dynamic content from your actual list if something already exists in there that helps you identify what the approval is about. In this particular case, I'm just going to say content uh, that needs uh, needs approving. Okay, so we'll just pop that in. Then we're going to assign this to myself. So I'm going to type my name and that's going to load up my name in the organization. And then we can put any additional details in here. Okay, so we could put in the title of what it is, followed by maybe the description of what it is that's going on. Okay, and that will feed through into the approval. Okay, that's that step done. Now, basically, when we have a new item that is created, it's going to send uh, an approval request to myself for approval of that type of content in this example. The next thing we want to do is actually put in a condition. The condition is going to tell us what to do if the approval is well approved or denied. Okay, so in this particular case, we can set up an approval um, for something or we can actually set up a separate flow if it is rejected um, and then a separate flow for if it is approved. We're going to keep this example very, very simple because I, this is really quite a simple tutorial. It doesn't have to be overly complicated, but just note that you can go in separate directions at this point. So the first thing we want to do here is that we want to say that if the outcome, okay, equals with a capital, because it's capital sensitive, by the way, cap sensitive, um, approval, um, approved, I think it actually comes through as, um, if the outcome is equal to approved, then we want to do something over this side. Okay, so in that particular case, what we want to do is we want to update our list okay this is the whole point of the video right we want to update our sharepoint list so to do that in our little uh, operation here what we're going to do is we're going to find all of the sharepoint based functions by clicking into sharepoint and then we're going to look down our list for something that is update item we could of course narrow this down by typing in the word update and it says update item you've got update file update file properties update files with ai builder results etc etc but it's update item that we want okay it's an item in a sharepoint list okay so now we go ahead and we put in here uh, the company for the address the list name is the content plan and the id of our um, item of course is from our trigger so we can come into our dynamic content and we can find the id from our trigger when an item was created okay now of course we get all of these different fields which marry up with our sharepoint list okay if we take a look at our sharepoint list we have title description content medium publish date approval right those are the um, columns that we have here you can see title description content medium publish date and approval and a couple of these are drop down menus okay so we could update any of this information at this point we have kind of full reign to go ahead and adjust anything we want when it comes to this piece of information which allows us to maybe if something is denied actually backfeed you know comments back into that item so that the member of staff knows why you've rejected it okay but we're not going to do that today we're just going to take a look at this section right here so we don't need to adjust the title we don't need to adjust the description we don't need to adjust the content medium we don't need to adjust the published date unless of course there's a reason to do so um, but we do want to go, of course, say that it's been approved. So from here, we can use the drop down menu because in my list, this is a drop down function uh, with a choice function. OK, and here we can see I can say yes. Now, all of these blank areas, you leave them blank. Blank means no update will happen. OK, if you put anything in here, it will basically overwrite the data inside your team's list. So the only thing that we want to update is the approval value with the word yes. From here, we can go ahead and we can click save. And that is now our updated list complete. Now, when a new item is created and we'll get a, a approval request, we'll approve it and it will go ahead and add the word yes into our list. So if we come back out of here, we go back to our flows. OK, we can just turn that off for a second. What I will do is I'll turn off my other one because we only want one of these to trigger. We don't want both of them. OK, so update list is the only thing that is running from our SharePoint website here and from our list. We, or we could do this in Microsoft Teams as well if we really wanted to. We can come into here and we can add an item here. But for the purpose of today's video, based on the fact that the title is SharePoint list, we're going to go ahead and do it in SharePoint, but they're the same thing. So we'll go ahead and add a new item. 
Okay, um, in here it's going to ask for a title. I'm going to say how to update a SharePoint um, list from Power Automate. Like so, um, this will be basically a tutorial, uh, tutorial video. Uh, something to that effect. We're going to say it's a video that we're going to create, and I want this to go out on the 27th of the of December, right? We're not going to change the approval. It's going to be completely blank. We'll just save this in, and there we go, right? We got our first list item created. Now, if we head back over to Power Automate here, we can go ahead and click into our list here, and it should actually come through down here as triggering a new item being created. Okay, we'll just give that a moment and it should populate very soon. Sometimes I find that the very first time that you want to run one of these flows, the very first kind of test that you do, it doesn't always work. I'm not entirely certain as to why that is, but we'll go back and we'll just add a second item in here just for kind of clarity on this. We'll just call it test uh, with a description of more testing. OK, uh, we'll call that a video as well. We'll do that for the 26th and we'll just save that in as well. OK, so there's two items now in there. We'll come back to our flow here. We'll give this a quick refresh and we'll see whether or not it will trigger. Let's give it a moment and see if anything comes through. OK, so you can see here now that both of them are running. I don't know why it does this. It gets a little bit buggy from time to time on that. But now it's going to work effortlessly every single time without that. It's only really the first time that you actually use a flow that it seems to have these issues. Anyway, we can see here that uh, we have a couple of flows that are kind of triggered. Uh, you can see here in the new design on exactly what is going on. Basically, an item was created. We're waiting for an approval flow. For that, we have emails, right? So we have emails that come through where we can approve them or reject them. We also have these inside Microsoft Teams under the activity section. Here, you can see that we have two approvals. One is for the the first one okay so you can see right here how to update SharePoint list um, from Power Automate tutorial okay that is the first one that we created and then the second one which was test more testing so you can see how we have the information coming through on that approval flow I'm going to go ahead and use the first one as our clean example we'll go ahead and approve that inside uh, of our um, Microsoft uh, Teams and of course if I go back um, to um, the let me just minimize that if we go back to our emails we could of course approve the second one which is the testing uh, testing which is this one right here okay and we could approve this from our emails we could also submit comments I'm not going to and I'm going to approve that as well okay so back over into Power Automate if we come back out of here we can see that these should have both been successful in their runs okay so quickly what we can do is we can head back over into our SharePoint site we can give that a quick refresh and see if those approvals have come on through they have not so we need to see that it's uh, what's changed within our data so if we come on over into our flows here we'll click the first one okay here you can see that this has flowed through but in our condition it hasn't come through as true okay now again if I go and put this into a more uh, into the older design it actually gives you more information in my opinion it's easy to find so here you can see it says false if you come into your raw data you can see it says false from our approval we come down we scroll down we are looking for the outcome right and it's approve so i think i put approval rather than approve so if we come into edit okay come back into our screen here we go into our condition i put approved it's actually approve so you know these are the finer details that we need to see once we click save on this we can go ahead and test this once again so we go test we automatically use the trigger from before and we'll go ahead and test it this time of course it's going to trigger the whole thing all over again so you're going to get another request if i come over to microsoft teams you can see here we have a new request coming through this is for test more testing i'll go ahead and approve it okay that's going to now trigger that all the way through so we'll go ahead and bring back our conditions here you can see this time it came back true and it would have updated everything in our SharePoint list we'll come over to SharePoint we'll give this a quick refresh and here you can see that we have the word yes okay so essentially what we've done here is basically now allowed for a kind of more seamless kind of um, approach to updating your Microsoft Teams list now in this particular example it's very very straightforward right it's not over Overly complicated in any way all we're doing here is basically saying when an item is created set an approval if approved 
change and update the list. Now this can be very complicated. We can make this as complex as you want. We could of course expand this into a very, very complex flow structures that have lots of different conditions. And if certain conditions are met, then you can basically tell Power Automate to update the list with various other pieces of information. This is a very powerful tool because it allows you to kind of maybe even project manage things on very granular levels of detail based on the inputs of what is going on within your list. For example, the trigger doesn't have to be when an item is created. It could be something very different. It might be when an item is updated rather than actually initially created. And so you could have multiple different flows updating your list in real time based on real time conditions. So like I say, this is an essential tool, in my opinion, to really kind of be powerful for streamlining your workflows and eliminating a lot of those repetitive one off tasks that you generally have. If you found this video helpful and informative in any way, smash that like button for me, guys. I really do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to stay updated with all the hints and tips with Power Automate, BI, and all of the 365 Office Suite. Guys, if you haven't done so already, check that video out right there. It's one you don't want to miss.